Hello, everybody. Thank you to be here. So I will present you a work about uh, an indicator um, on the power lines right away. Uh, so this is a work we have done uh, with a student who is called Estelle Nico and a researcher, Gabrielle Martin. Is, uh, she's a Bostonist and um, uh, working in evolutionary implant. And also we work with the natural reserve in France with Amdouard. So next slide. So this was the team. So you have Estelle Nico who done all the field work and uh, the research uh, assistant professor, uh, Gabriel Martin. And uh, me that I'm working at uh, RTE, the French electricity grid. So um, why an indicator in uh, a context of collapse of biodiversity, uh, legislative changes and search for alternative solution, that's what we are going to see. Well, um, I've already uh, told that in other presentation, but uh, we, are, uh, we have major threat now, and uh, it's important to monitor the biodiversity state and uh, uh, evaluate the measure and means implemented for it and to report and communicate on involvement in preserving biodiversity and progress made. Oh, sorry, it was next slide. Okay, other one. <laughs> other one, sorry. Okay, so um, RTE is uh, directly concerned by the challenges of protecting biodiversity um, we have 100,000 kilometers of power line in France and 20% uh, are in forested area, so it represents 48,000 hectares uh, of right away. And uh, to prevent trees from touching the line, we are using geocutting as an effective solution. Um, so uh, we maintain security uh, every three, six, 12 years. Uh, it's, um, it's different because uh, of the distance uh, of the, uh, the power line and the soil, and so the, the, the growth of the trees. Um, so um, uh, in, uh, at RTE just now, we have an indicator of the number of hectares that we have uh, under uh, alternative vegetation management because um, in order to uh, change um, our activity and to be more sustainable, um, we try to um, uh, change our um, uh, management. Uh, instead of uh, geocutting, we try to have uh, agreements with landowners or uh, hunters, uh, uh, farmers, or just having some natural habitat, but we, for example, just cut one tree, so it's selective cutting. So this is the alternative vegetation management, and how can we uh, compare the both in terms of biodiversity. Uh, is there a good solution for biodiversity, for example? That's a question. So um, the request was to create an indicator of biodiversity in the line right away. Okay, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> um, so next slide, please. So the, our objective was uh, or our, our indicator called FLORE correctly assess the plant biodiversity on the high voltage power lines, and those FLORE indicators detect plant biodiversity differences between uh, habitat types and management practice. So we have different hypotheses. Uh, well, I don't think I have the time to say all the objective here, but um, we will uh, go on. So next slide, please. So that's the method we used. Next slide. Uh, so this is a Florerec protocol. So this is an indicator for non-botany 
botanical specialist. So the data collection is uh, done at five meters of the pylon and on a transect of 25 meters, and it's based on visual perception. And it's com composed in two parts. Next slide, please. So in the first part of the protocol, we um, uh, look at general information on the light rhino um, the habitat diversity. Uh, so we look at uh, if it's high forest, coppice, and meadows. I just say that this um, definition of coppice and meadows and high forests are based on RTE definition of the people working there because in uh, botanical uh, definition, that's not the good one. But we have to use the vocabulary of the people working at RTE so that they understand what we want to do. So we look at the presence of particular and privacy identified species, uh, the soil permeability, and the presence of particular and previously identified habitat. So that's the first part. The second part is we are looking in uh, each um, uh, habitat, and there we look at the plant biodiversity, the presence of invasive species, we look at the management practice, tree diameter, and so on. And we, we put some points every time. Uh, well, uh, the, the people doing that don't know the points, but uh, this is how it is uh, uh, constructed. Next slide, please. So this is uh, about uh, the results. I'm sorry, this is in French. Uh, it should be in English. But um, so you have a uh, so you you have a maximum score, or you have a radar chart, and so you can compare uh, uh, year after year or uh, between the um, the different right away. Next slide, please. So um, to validate FLOREC indicator, um, we have done exhaustive botany um, survey on the power line. So we've done also a 25 meter transect and a five meter square where we look at all the, the plant species under the power line within the transect. And we look at the species frequency. Next slide, please. So uh, we worked on 16 locations sampling between May and June, which is the best um, uh, season to, to make a, a survey of plants. Uh, so it was mainly in the Paris region, and it was in high forest, coppice, and meadows. Next slide, please. So here are the results. So we were very happy to see that we had a good correlation between the Florex score and the plant richness. Um, so that was positive and significant. So we thought that it was great. And um, we saw no difference, um, no significant difference with, uh, you can change, sorry, this, <laughs> okay, so the, the, the other one, yes. Yeah. So we look at the relationship between floric and botanical richness according to habitats, and there is no significant difference within high forest and uh, coppice. Uh, in the high forest, we just have two points, so it, it was not uh, interesting to look at that because we just have two points. So um, it's better to look in the, in the meadows and um, in the coppice. Um, what we look so also it was there is a significant difference for grassland, and we it seems that Florex seems to overestimate biodiversity sites uh, for grassland. Uh, next slide, please. And we look also at the management practice. Uh, so there is uh, no significant difference between the Florex score and the plant richness resulting from the exhaustive botany protocol. Uh, but we have also very few points uh, for the, the, the fauchage, that's uh, the meadow cutting. Um, next slide, please. 
So in the conclusion, uh, we, um, this is an adequate assessment of plant biodiversity in right away. Uh, there is a detection of plant biodiversity difference according to habitat type and management practice. And the advantage it is to implement it by non-botanical specialists. And it provides results comparable uh, to conventional vegetation survey. And what... Oh, okay, sorry, I'm speaking and it's not... So here is it. Uh, so I was speaking about the advantage and uh, the, the big advantage is that uh, Non-botanical -bo specialists can do it, so people working at RTE that they had to cut the vegetation and, uh, and uh, work, work on, on that subject uh, can do it. And what is interesting is that raising awareness among employees, uh, the people who tried it um, uh, with us, uh, said at the end that uh, they opened their mind and they saw uh, biodiversity differently and the right away differently. So that was a good point because um, uh, they, they are interesting in it and instead of uh, want to cut it, uh, they, we, we can change perhaps behavior. And so FLORIC allows to extend plant biodiversity data survey um, to monitor the impacts of management practice. Uh, next slide, please. So now it's the first step uh, because we don't have so many points. Uh, it was just in Paris, so we need to, uh, uh, to, to work um, across France and also according to habitat type and to management practice. Um, this will improve the robustness of the statistical analysis. Um, and. Uh, that sure that FLORIC indicator can't replace complete botanical survey uh, carried out by specialists. So I thank you very much. You can check. Yes, thank you. Are there any questions? Yep, Marguerite. So has this um, initiative um, been able to transform uh, management practices? Um, have you seen a, an effect of the people who, who are managing those right of ways? Uh, so we haven't been there so far. We just have some people who have tried it. It was uh, voluntary. We asked for people who wants to do that. Uh, we have to say that uh, it's difficult to say, well, come and look to at biodiversity on the power line. So um, some people have done it. And uh, what we want, uh, we want to be sure that uh, this is a good work. Uh, we can't just say to people, go and look at biodiversity, and then the indicator is very false. So uh, we have to ensure us that uh, that's a good job, and then we can we can tell them. But what was positive is that uh, people that, that are the, um, the manager uh, said, oh, but that's a, that's a good idea, it's May, June, so in France we have the a Nature Fest, uh, Fête de la Nature, and uh, in, the, in the society people organize to do things for, for biodiversity, so that could be in that uh, time of a period of year, so um, that could be uh, very positive. <laughs> 